Hi, and welcome to Voices from the Left. I'm Craig. Thanks for listening. I have a quote to set the tone. Can there be any greater evil than discord and distraction and plurality where unity ought to reign? Or any greater good than the bond of unity? Plato. You can see the citation for that quote uh, in the show notes. Today, I'll be speaking with Tim Corden from the Building Unity Project, which he helps coordinate. The project is based in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, We'll be discussing how the project works to reach diverse groups of people to build a united movement for peace, justice, sustainability, and democracy. Tim, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Craig. It's really a pleasure to be here. Yeah. All right, let's dive right in. So would you provide a little background about yourself, please? Well, um, I am a father. Uh, I've got three adult daughters. uh, I've been a nurse for much of my uh, years as a laborer. Um, I've been a farmer. I've been an elementary school teacher and a few other odd jobs. But in the last few years, the state of the world um has led me to believe that I needed you know that I needed to do something to try to stop the myriad of crises that we are heading for um as a father as someone who cares about future generations I I felt that I needed to do that so I left my job as a nurse um and started looking for work in the realm of social and ecological justice, which I found. And for the last five years before retirement, I worked as a social justice coordinator for a Unitarian Universalist congregation here in Madison. Um, It was in that capacity that I uh, really followed my dream. I got the support to go ahead and try to facilitate and start a project that would um, help to bring the left together, uh, help to bring the environmental movement, the pro-democracy movements, the um, sustainability and and ecology movements, and and the peace movement. Uh, This has been a dream of mine for some reason for most of my life. And it's not an easy dream, but I've I've realized that I needed to pursue that. And then after working with First Unitarian Society as their social justice coordinator, I reached the retirement age uh, and decided that it was time to really dedicate the rest of my working life strictly to building a intersectional movement. And so I've gone out on my own, so to speak, but I'm unemployed and working as a volunteer to coordinate the Building Unity Project. Excellent. Um, so you've, you've touched on it a little bit, but how specifically did you come up with the idea for the project and how, how did it like solidify and, you know, essentially like come to be? Well, um, so back about uh, five, six years ago, I, I just decided to meet with activists one on one for a little bit, um, reached out to some of my favorite activists in the community and said, I really think we need to uh, build a united movement. Um, Trump had just gotten um, elected. He hadn't taken office yet. Uh, but uh, so we started having little living room meetings, uh, maybe a half dozen of of us, and you know, having um, snacks and tea and we decided to launch something. Uh, We didn't know quite what to call it, but we wanted to pull together activists. And on a poster for our first event was, uh, it said, you know, we want to pull together, listen to the leaders of the movement, of of our movements, you know, so that we can, uh, how can we best build unity and, um, you know, have have kind of a, a, um, the movement of our dreams. And um, like what to, you know, these posters were sitting there and Norm Stockwell, who was in the room, um, editor for the Progressive Magazine at this time, or at that time he was an uh, editor, he still is. Um, 
He just pointed on the poster. I remember just reaching over to the coffee table, putting his finger on it. He said, how about building unity? And everybody liked that name. And um, so we just decided to run with it as a placeholder name because we realized that that is what we're doing right now. What we need to do is build unity amongst those that care about the earth, those that care about people, those that care about our democracy, and those that, you know, care about people so much that they don't want to kill them in military operations around the world, uh, which is what the U.S. has been a champion of for longer than than I know. So um, really, um, our, our, I, I think it's time. I think people are ready. And I think your podcast is a classic example of the collective consciousness, you know, erupting. People want to unite and I really thank you for doing what you're doing because it's a big part of uh, building unity is is giving people a chance to tell their stories and inspire each other and and find each other. So thank you. Yeah, that's really great. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I hope we can we reach as many people as possible for sure. Um, who are some of the some of the other groups involved in the project? Yeah, so early on we reached out to. Uh, the Wisconsin Network for Peace and Justice, which is an organization that's uh, about 35 years old, roughly. Um, and, it, you know, uh, it's been um, a umbrella and communication and networking uh, um, group, umbrella um, for lots and lots of peace and justice groups. And if you look on their website, wnpj.org, you can find all their member groups and they provide an excellent uh, web, web page with a calendar of events. And so all of their members can post their events on this calendar. Sure. And, um, and they do some, some uh, great networking events like their spring and fall summits. And it's, a, it's become an all volunteer organization. It's been hard to keep paid staff. I think, um, or to keep the funds to have continual paid staff. But I went to that organization back in 2018 and I said, you know, this is what I want to do. And I've been talking to some other activists and I'd really like this to be a project of the Wisconsin Network for Peace and Justice. And they were very agreeable. Um, the staff there and the board were very agreeable. I ended up joining the board and then later um, uh, becoming the board president for a little while. Um, but uh, it was a little too much trying to run Building Unity and be the board president. And I, I spent about three, maybe four years on the board and decided it was time just to focus on the Wisconsin Network for Peace. And, or I'm sorry, just on Building Unity. But at any rate, that was the first kind of organization uh, or network of organizations that joined us. And, and we also, um, one of their members, the Family Farm Defenders has been very supportive throughout our, our history. Um, uh, Call for Peace Drum and Dance Company um, that was co-founded by Art and Don Shigoni uh, has been there from the beginning. The Wisconsin Grassroots Network um, a lot of different progressive groups are part of the Wisconsin Grassroots Network. They've been by our side since the beginning and helped to promote what we're trying to do and join in when they can. Um, who else? Oh, the NAACP has been an excellent partner. Um, our Wisconsin Education Fund, which is the 501c3 arm of our Wisconsin Revolution, has been very supportive and We've worked with Voces de la Frontera. We've worked with WAVE. We've worked with different wisdom affiliates um, like Esther and Moses. Basically, we, we, we figure out a project we want to do, whether it's you know whatever feels most pressing. It might be trying to stop a pipeline. Oh, I should mention 350 Wisconsin, uh, formerly 350 Madison, but now uh, more of a statewide organization has been a, a wonderful partner of ours on and off over the years. So yeah, that's just a, uh, a few of them. Um, oh, Expo, Ex-Incarcerated People Organizing have been uh, great partners in the last 
six months, uh, especially. Um, a Mothers Against Gun Violence out of Milwaukee. Um, anyway, I, I think that answers your question. A wide range of groups. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. That is, that's excellent. Uh, so what are the four pillars of the Building Unity Movement? Thank you. Yes, the four pillars, um, and this is kind of my mantra, and I want everybody to, to know these. Um, peace, justice, sustainability, and democracy. And if, and if I could, I'd like to just elaborate um, a little bit on the importance of each one. Yeah, um, sure. I'll start with peace. It's kind of the unsung hero or, or uh, it's really not been in people's minds, even though we've been in nonstop war for as long as I can remember or supporting wars of other countries. Um, 60 some percent of our discretionary tax dollars uh, funds go to supporting military and military operations war, what have you. We know that there's big money, that there's a military industrial complex that is really all about keeping themselves going and making billions and billions of dollars promoting war. And at the end of the day, war never solves anything. And the, the you know, who's losing? Well, the people who are victims of war certainly are losing in a big way. But also those of us in America and in other countries that support this kind of military spending. I should say there are no other countries that support that kind of military. The United States spends more on military every year than the next nine top weapons uh, or uh, uh, military spenders put together. So we beat the pants off of Russia, China, Israel, you know, um, United Kingdom, uh, India. You put them all together and they don't add up to what we spend on military. That's money that could go to healthcare, money that could go to education, to job programs, to housing, to you name it, reparations for the atrocities that we've committed. Um, it's money that is just going to death and destruction. And when we, the people, recognize this and do something about it, um, there's going to be a whole lot more money for addressing the climate crisis, you know, creating mass rail systems and solar farms and wind farms and all kinds of things rather than weapons of mass destruction. Um, so that's the peace part. Sustainability, I think, goes without saying. Um, if you're half awake at all, you realize we are in a serious climate emergency and we're just seeing the beginnings of it, the first decade or two of its obviousness. It's going to get more intense. The scientists have been telling us for at least a decade now that this is coming on faster than they thought it would. They know, they've know they known for a long time, yep. but the acceleration that we're seeing now is haunting. And for those of us, and I know, Craig, you have children, I have children, they're adults, but you know, young people are facing a hellish existence on planet Earth. And um, like you say, we're seeing the beginnings of this, and I feel um, morally responsible to try to wake up the world to the fact that we cannot do enough to stop the climate crisis and convert to wind, solar, public transit, um, really efficient small homes. You know, everyone does not need their multi-level, you know, four-bedroom rent um McMansion, right? I mean, right. we all live in smaller spaces. I, you know, I think um, we, yeah, we need to. It's the the right thing to do. And of course, democracy. Stop the erosion of our democracy. Stop gerrymandering. Stop the big money. Let's face it. It's no, it's it's not debatable. The more money you have, the better chance you have of electing. So, of being elected, rather. So we are basically in a plutocracy where the people with the most money can determine who's running the country to a large extent, even when it's not in our best interest. Big, rich billionaires, millionaires, whatever, people like Donald Trump have the resources to keep the rich going. And um, that has to stop. We have to stop gerrymandering um, where 
politicians are choosing the voters rather than voters are choosing the politicians. Uh, we have to stop voter suppression. Um, you know, everything, uh, there's just been a constant assault on trying to whittle away making voting accessible to people. Yep. And you should be going the other direction, you know, paid time off, um, weekend voting, evening voting, voting online, uh, mail-in ballots, make it easy, drop off. Like, what is this making laws so that during a pandemic, you can't even drop uh, uh, your vote off in a locked dr uh, drop box? Right. It, anyway, so obviously they don't, there's people that don't want the people to vote. And this, we we need to wake up to that fact. And then, of course, the last thing is justice, comprehensive justice for those that have been most oppressed by racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, ageism, all of it. We need to stand with, you know, and as a white middle class, middle aged or no, I'm past middle aged now, elder male. I know that I'm, you know, privilege wise at the top of the heap. And it's time for people like us to sit, to demand that um, those that have been more marginalized and cut out of the picture get to be at the front of the line and get to be at the center of the conversation. And we need to make reparations for the harms done by um, racist policies and sexist policies and homo and transphobic policies and ableist policies. So we've begun, um, but I think that we need we we need to build a solidarity movement where all marginalized people are put at the center, and we're all calling for an end to war, and we're all calling for a, an ecological green new deal that puts union you know family um, supporting uh, wage earners that are that have the right to collectively bargain yeah. at center of this revolution for wind farms and and um, solar farms mass transit systems and building retrofitting so that we're not putting all the heat and uh, wasted energy out into the atmosphere where it just adds to the warmth for sure yeah no, that's, thanks that's for letting me on so much i feel like yeah, i've been no. up <laughs> no worries no that's excellent um so what is the building unity solidarity statement so basically, we want people to know where we stand. Now, we can't do everything at once. Sure. Um, but And so we're not necessarily addressing all these things in the th work that we're doing. But our goal is that we will get big enough and sophisticated enough that we are addressing all these things and, and more. But it's basically peace, justice, sustainability, and democracy. So we start with, uh, these are bullet points in the solidarity statement, a strong democracy. Uh, restoring voting rights, securing fair fair voting districts, and eliminating the influences of big money in electoral politics. BIPOC, that's Black, Indigenous, people of color, justice, sovereignty, and solidarity. Um, equal protections and opportunities under the law for all people, ending all forms of racial, gender, um, and other forms of discrimination. Environmental action. Um, real strong environmental action. We've watched the Supreme Court, for Christ's sake, water down our our um, Clean Air Act, our Clean Water yeah. Act. I mean, this is ridiculous. We should be going the other direction with, with stronger laws that protect the commons, our water. You know, why are we giving corporates, corporations a tax break and the ability to pollute more so that they can make more money? We need to address the climate emergency. We need to restore reproductive rights and bodily autonomy for all people. We need to reform our, our archaic, punitive, and inhumane criminal justice system so that it is grounded in compassion, rehabilitation, and healing, and respect for all. We need restorative justice. We need economic justice that we're meeting all human needs, healthcare, housing, education, nutrition, living wages, safe environments, and the right to collectively bargain are human rights. We need immigration reform that is grounded in compassion. As you and I have talked before, Craig, we Eurocentric, Euro um, Americans are the immigrants that colonized this continent. Yep. And so the immigrants that need to be, uh, we need to watch out for are the white immigrants, but, but um, 
you know, if you're not a, if you're not an indigenous person or you're not a descendant of slaves, you are an immigrant or the descendant of immigrants. And that's what made it's made our country great. So we need to reform immigration so that our neighbors are respected. And and certainly we should not be be putting separating children from their parents and putting yeah. children in cages uh, and, you know, hunting down people that are trying to have a better life. Policies that the U.S. has created are creating the climate crisis, and we're going to see more refugees looking to our our wealthy and beautiful country with lots of clean, fresh water. They're going to be coming here for jobs and for a better life. And I think we need to go back to opening our doors, you know, bring us your tired and huddled masses, and let's um, let's share the wealth that we have. We need to de decriminalize drug use. Obviously, the war on drugs didn't work. It created more violence, more harm, and destroyed lives. And we have a mass incarceration problem that is that is unparalleled anywhere in the world. The U.S. has more people in prison. So we need to immediately legalize marijuana, which is legal all around Wisconsin. Yep. Uh, why are we encouraging people to burn fossil fuels and drive to Michigan or Illinois or Minnesota so that they can get their either medicine or their recreational marijuana. Uh, it's it's insane. And the, the money we're losing by not doing that, uh, by not uh, legalizing marijuana is, uh, makes no sense. Um, and of course, anyone who's in prison for marijuana use, anyone who's in jail for marijuana use, if that's all you're in for, send them home, please. And of course, we got to send a lot of other people home, not just marijuana people. But, you know, any nonviolent criminals uh, or what we call criminals, people who have made mistakes, I should say, please forgive me. Any people who've made mistakes that are nonviolent should be released. Help, you know, give them the help. Crimes of poverty. We shouldn't be locking people in cages. It's totally inhumane. And then lastly, on our solidarity statement, and I know I've embellished a bit, but um we need to reallocate military funding. Um, we need to defund our military as rapidly as we can and still keep our protect our borders and keep our people safe. But we need to fund the military much, much less and make sure that we're spending that money on education, housing, and meeting the human needs here at home and around the world as well. Because we do have the luxuries of, of wealth and there are people around the world that could use a little help. So that's basically the solidarity statement. And anyone who signs on to that um, can be part of this building unity movement in any way that they want to. Um, we're encouraging people to do what feels good to you, whether that's tabling, leafleting, um, doing social media, uh, organizing uh, potlucks and neighborhood events, whatever. Uh, there's so many ways that we can build a culture of nonviolence. A, a culture of cooperation, of restorative transformation, regenerative culture. Um, we can do this in so many ways, and we're just really wanting people to find their own niche and then tie it in somehow with this larger movement that we're calling the Building Unity Movement. Thank you, Craig. Yeah, no, that's excellent. Um, and what we've discussed so far, most of this information you can find on the buildingunitywisconsin.org website. I'll have that website in the show notes, of course. Um, but yeah, all right. So let's shift gears a little bit. Um, so, you know, one thing in order to do what you're talking about, you have to have organizing efforts, right? Similar to the way a union does their organizing and things like that. So what uh, of what you've done so far, what has been your most uh, effective approach to achieving a diverse participant turnout for your events, your tours, summits, meetings, etc.? Well, you know, organizing is hard and it yeah, I, I can't pretend that we have this figured out. Uh and um but I will say that one of my colleagues, Charlie Uphoff, uh, who's been with building. He's one of the first people that showed up in those living room conversations. Uh, back in um, 2019, when we started preparing for the 2020 elections, we realized we did not want a repeat of what happened in 2016. So 
we were going to go all out and to the best of our ability we did but uh charlie said you know i think we should get an uh an rv a bus and travel around the state uh he found an rv online and he and i drove up to uh minnesota up north of the twin cities away in a winter day and we drove this rv back and um we started putting banners on it painting on it going to take it around we were going to have potlucks all over the state and have this traveling show it was ambitious and maybe a little crazy but then covid hit kind of saved our butts because uh we then had to shut it all down <laughs> sure but um we 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 did continue to travel around the state and we found artists that were willing to help decorate the bus and we started showing up at things and you know we've been in parades and county fairs but this you this vehicle for our movement the building unity mobile or the unity mobile for short um is something that we're really proud of and pleased with um it's a gas guzzler we're not proud of that fact but sometimes you got to burn a little carbon and 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 pollute some air to get your message across so we've been all over the state a, a couple of times hoping to be somewhere in the vicinity of labor fest and uh supporting uh labor labor day you know and and then yep. international day of peace is coming up we want to be doing something something with that on peace day that's uh, september 21st we haven't figured all this out but um the next big event that we want to make sure that people are aware of is indigenous people's day um now, a lot of people know it as Columbus Day or have referred to it as Columbus Day in their past. We are of the mind that Columbus was a colonizer, a violent and um, self-centered, um, you know, very uh, genocidal uh, explorer. Um, the damage done to people, uh, indigenous peoples by Christopher Columbus's um, missions um is pretty horrific yep and so um we shouldn't have a national holiday celebrating this kind of conquering and colonization and violence it's a sad it's a it's a tragic part of our history it should not be the center of a holiday and many have called that instead we call it indigenous people's day and instead we celebrate the people who are here first the people yep. whose land would we stole or our ancestors our european ancestors stole and um really celebrate the resilience and the ingenuity and the accomplishments of the many nations that were on this continent for millennia um right so uh that's october 9th and you know after that i don't know but the big thing we're doing right now that i want to just talk on before this podcast ends is we're trying to create a unity plan with four parts. And you never guess what those four parts of the plan would be. Of course you would. Peace, yeah. justice, sustainability, and democracy. And so our goal is to have a plan with four main focuses. Now, as I said earlier, we can't do everything at once. But if we can have one focused point that the movement can get behind in the area of peace, one focused point for sustainability, et cetera, we believe that we can start to build more cohesion and unity on the left or in the progressive movement, if you will, and that um, more and more people will take notice and join this movement. For sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and one thing, you know, to your point about driving the RV around, um, you know, we're all forced to participate in capitalism, right? that that could easily be an electric rv and it could have been an electric rv a long time ago right but yeah the the people you know the the billionaires and millionaires running those industries don't let it happen so you know yes. yeah it's not great sure but you know it, it, we don't have a choice at some point right so right it's thank just, you just, yeah it's just the way we are right it, it, yeah, it's, it's exactly. unfortunate but that's that's the world we live in and trying to change it is the the way to do it right that's exactly yep. and i really appreciate you um you know a lot of times people get confused and they want to point at individuals 
who are driving their cars or driving this RV or whatever. And, and it's really important to, it, you know, the, the changes we need are not, we should all do what we can on an individual level, but what we need is sweeping yeah. massive system changes. And I think that's your point. And I really appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. You know, one other thing to, to put a little finer point on that part in particular, you know, the U S military is one of the largest polluters in the world. Like we, you know, our military industrial complex causes the harm. And then some of that, you know, and some of the harm anyway, a lot of it. And then the people want to come here because of the harm the U.S. military caused in some cases. And then we put them in cages. Right. (laughs) So, uh, you know, that's it's uh, yeah, it's it's a hard thing to reconcile with. And I just imagine some people, you know, they they just sit on their piles of money and don't think about it (laughs) is kind of how I how I look at it. Um, I think uh, it's important that we recognize that most Americans in their hearts don't want this kind of world that you know, we don't want that kind of leadership. Right. We're good people. We're hardworking people. We're compassionate people. Um, but uh, but I think there's a fear that if you criticize your government, if you criticize your military, that somehow you're less patriotic, you're less uh, American. Um, and I think, Craig, you and I know that the greatest compliment we can pay our mother country, if you will, is yeah. to criticize it to be its best. Right. That's the most patriotic and loving thing we can do to our country is to demand that it be as a country we can be proud of. Um, it isn't a, uh, the case that we need to make America great again. We need to try to make America great for the first time because sure. while America has many great aspects, don't get me wrong, I'm I love my country. It has been founded on slavery, built on slavery, built on genocide, founded on land theft, rape, torture, murder, and and capitalistic greed and oppression. So we need to face that capitalism is not working for any of us, and it's certainly not working for a sustainable future for our children. And we're going to have to dismantle capitalism. It's not going to be easy, but for sure, it's, but yeah. it's, it's got to happen. Thank yep. you. Yeah, you bet. No, for sure. Um, yeah, I can't echo that sentiment more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's been the, the biggest obstacle you faced with your uh, organizing efforts? Hmm, I would say, um, you know, those of us on the left that are aware of what's going on and just how insane it is that we are funneling all our money into making wars, giving tax breaks to the richest people, squeezing the poorest people. Those of us that are just like laying awake at night saying, what is going on? Right. Right. We tend to work, you know, we're involved in many, many groups. We're involved in, in many projects and we're drained and overloaded and but yet those are the people that get what we're trying to talk about and why we need to build a movement. And when you come to those people, they're like, oh, my God, I can't do another thing. Um, and what I keep trying to tell people, but see, if we can get united, it's a whole lot less work for all of us, because yeah, instead of a yep. hundred different groups in your community doing a hundred different things, all having their hundred different fundraisers and their hundred different calendars of events what if we had one movement that took turns and we could all yeah maybe this week we're all in for trans rights and making sure that our trans siblings feel the full love of our uh, but that doesn't mean that our climate justice uh people aren't going to get it next week right or our immigrant justice people aren't going to get it the week after we need to create a government where the people set the agenda we set, we create the legislation, we pass it because we see the needs and we care about each other. And, and that re, that's going to involve some turn taking. It didn't get to be this mess overnight. Right. And it's not going to clean up overnight, but we can take turns and it's not going to be easy, but we got to do it. And so 
I think the biggest obstacle is getting people to realize that despite the fact that they are overburdened and overwhelmed by what they're trying to do already, that they need to put some of that down and build unity um, and, and get out from under that identity. Well, I work on climate or I work on racial justice. Um, we got to work on this united movement. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, some of those things have natural ties anyway, right? The racial justice movement and climate justice, you know, the the billionaires that pollute or let their companies pollute, intentionally pollute in some cases, they're polluting in the areas where the marginalized people are, right? They're not polluting in their own backyard because they know what they're doing, right? They're not accidentally dumping billions of gallons of waste into the Ecuadorian rainforest. It's, you know, Chevron did that on purpose. Texaco did that on purpose, right? And they still don't want to pay for it. Like, that's what's happening, right? And, and you know, for people to realize that, look, yeah, we, we have to, you know, get out of the silos, right? And find some common ground, right? To come together and realize that a, a lot of this is capitalism in general that does this. But, you know, you, you know, your, you know, your, rights being violated while you might be your right might you know you might have a different right being violated than the person next to you you're both being violated probably by the same person right or same company right and that's that's the unity that you're talking about right realizing that look yeah we should say okay we're both the ones being taken advantage of here how can we come together to stop that right but do that on a a scale 10 100 a thousand times larger right but you got to start small. So you got to start small. And yeah. and I the place I think we need to start, and Craig, I hope that you'll be part of this, is having monthly potlucks where we take uh maybe a different topic each month, but we get to know each other. Any organizer realizes how important it is that we know each other, that we understand what our motivations are and what you know what stakes we have, what resources we have. We have to asset map all of the people around us and figure out how we can weave each other's skills, assets, talents, connections, so that we're creating an ever bigger snowball that's just rolling down this mountain. Yeah. And that's where we're at. Right now, you know, you and I are packing some snow. But right. we're, you know, and yeah. I think that in a couple of years, because of the necessity, because many people are waking up, you know, this whole anti-woke thing. Uh, no, we all need to wake up. Yeah. Yes. It is an insane, an insane world. Wake right. up, yeah. you know, and I'm not going to be ashamed or you know, I'm not being condescending when I say that. I need to wake up. I've lived most of my life being complacent and okay with white racism because of my privilege and because of the ignorance and complacency around me. I don't, I don't sure. need to beat myself up about it, but you know, it's true. I went along with it and racial justice was not an issue for me because I didn't have to be. But when the world woke up and started realizing that we had to address the racial issue, I mean, it made sense to me. Of course we do. And so I get it at least as well as I can. And hopefully we'll get it more and more with each passing year. But sure. um, yeah, we need to be at that kind of movement moment that doesn't stop, but just keeps escalating. And we need to disrupt, we need to resist, and we need to celebrate the many talents and, and beauties of our human family and all the many forms we come in, right? We're, we're gay, we're straight, we're trans, we're it, you know, able-bodied or various forms of able-bodied. We're tall, we're short, we're fat, we're thin. We're all of it. We're beautiful. And it's time for us to come together as a human family and demand that none of us go hungry. None of us go without housing. And uh, the only way we're going to do that is, is to, and that, that our children get a, get a shot at a livable world. The only way we're going to do that is to scale back on the military and the war making in the world yep. um, and divert that money instead 
to meeting human needs and, and fighting the ecological crisis. And you know, you don't need to be an expert. Um, I want to just uh, um, maybe finish with that. You know, like I haven't said any facts or figures. I've heard the facts or figures. I don't retain them. I'm not a, a, a scientist or a very knowledgeable person, and I'm not a historian. I'm not a political scientist. I'm not a, you know, I'm just an average working class guy, really. But I know enough and I'm awake enough to realize that we're heading for really hard times. And already too many of us are in really hard times. And the right thing to do is to work for justice and to make sure that nobody's going hungry. And that's what it boils down to. And of course, that we give our kids a chance to have a livable world, which means converting our whole lives to a non-carbon burning existence, which whew, that's a big undertaking. It, it sure is, but it, it's necessary for sure. So, all right. No, that was great. Um, so uh, would you talk a little bit about um, the Wisconsin Justice Summit? Uh, I believe it was an event you had earlier earlier this summer, correct? Yeah. On July 22nd, we were blessed with the leadership of Judge Everett Mitchell um, State Representative Francesca Hong, uh, Reverend Jerry Folk, uh, State Representative Darren Madison, State Representative Supreme Moor Omokunde, and um, one of the leaders in the NAACP, um, Montre Moore. Um, these leaders and myself, and uh, oh, and I'm sorry, Emily Park led for sustainability. Emily is the uh, communications director and operations manager and, and soon to be one of the executive directors of 350 Wisconsin. We had four breakout groups and some of the leaders I mentioned led uh, those breakout groups. We had great keynote speeches. We had a panel in the evening, but we gave people a lot of time. It was a day long. Uh, we, we served snacks in the morning, um, lunch and supper, and people were there all day, a total of about 12 hours. Wow. Um, and we got to know each other. Uh, there were about, uh, close to 100 people came through throughout the day, not all at the same time. Not everybody could be there for the whole day. But um, we began getting to know each other. And out of that summit, we've created what we're calling a unity plan steering committee. And that's still in formation. It's not too late. We haven't made any big decisions yet. So if people are listening to this and they're interested, um, we're kind of of the mind that, you know, until we have a diverse body at the table, it doesn't make sense to get too far along because then it's like, hey, come on and join my thing. And which is, doesn't work so well with building unity. So we're hoping to build more diversity um, we do have the NAACP involved and Wisconsin Voices, which uh, is a, um, a very diverse umbrella organization out of Milwaukee. They're, they're also statewide and have similar, very, very similar, if not identical, um, goals as building unity. Um, so we're excited. I think our diversity will grow. Uh, and with the coming of Indigenous Peoples Day, we're hoping to do some outreach in um, make sure that we have a, a fair number of indigenous people, Hmong people, Latinx people at the table. And then we're really going to try to zero in on this plan, hopefully by early winter, a plan that'll take us into 2024. I think obvious. it's pretty obvious that a lot of what we're going to be pushing for in 2024 mm -hmm. is to turn out the vote. Uh, coordinated efforts to really make sure that we have a strong, educated, and activated electorate that um, is the backbone of democracy. Yeah, excellent. What is something you'd like to do to expand awareness of the organization? We are going to be putting a little more energy into our web page, trying to keep it more relevant and up to date. Um, and possibly if we can raise the funds, I'd like to hire hire some people that have a little bit more technological skills than I have. Um, 
we're we're a volunteer organization. Um, I I work, you know, full time at it, but um, fortunately, I get Social Security and a little bit of pension money, and I'm able to. Um, I don't need to be paid for the work that I'm doing, but I think it would be really great to hire some talented young people. I'm of the mind that um, we can't have the movement of our dreams without all of the most marginalized and oppressed classes. And that includes young people, people of color. Um, and we need to pay people for the work that they're doing. So I think uh, some of the changes would involve better, more aggressive fundraising. I, like many of us, I don't like asking for money. I want to say, you know, we're not just another group asking for money. So consequently, we haven't been asking for money. And consequently, we haven't gotten any. <laughs> But I think the reality is if we want to build the kind of movement um, that we need to build, we're going to need some money. So uh, I encourage people that if you want to be part of this to consider giving five, 10, 15, you know, a hundred dollars, if you can part with it, we'll put it to good use. It certainly isn't going to be paying me. Uh, and I, I feel I, it's a privilege that I get to work for no pay. Um, and I'm glad that my social security is still hanging on. I'm not so sure, Craig, that you're going to have Social Security when you're of retirement age. And that that disturbs yeah. me. Yeah, you I know, might not. Yeah. Um, I know it's a great privilege, a privilege of my age that I get to retire at 60. You know, I'm 63 now. Um, and and it, and I hope that, that that same kind of fiscal opportunity is there for you and for my children and for your children um, because it's a great thing to reach a point in life where you say, huh, I don't have to go in and punch a clock. Uh, I can do my life's dream of whatever that may be. And for me, it's building a movement and um, meeting people like you. Excellent. I appreciate that. Um, so do you have any advice for someone trying to organize um whatever cause might be most important to them, whether it's one we've talked about for your organization or for one that just hasn't come up? Well, you know, this is my biased advice, of course, um, which would be um, don't stay in your silo just about your organization, but come and be the leader of that cause, whether that's climate justice or trans rights or uh, immigrant rights, whatever it is, bring it to the unity movement. That would be my advice, really, eventually. And I know that that's biased, but that is that is the higher calling I hear in my heart. Sure. Uh, but uh, aside from that, just, you know, I would say um, do less, better, and work to build a diverse uh, base. Uh, and this is a mistake that I've made many, many times and still make. You know, we get so excited, we want to jump in and start doing stuff. And I think it's probably better to meet with people and build the relationships and make sure that the people you want at the table are at the table. If it's just a, a bunch, the same old 10, you know, 50 plus year old white people, um, that's what you're going to attract. That's what you're going to build from. It's not going to be what you want. Sure. Most of us realize that diversity and equity and inclusion are all essential to the movement of our dreams. So I would say take the time, hold back on rushing ahead and um, you know, find out what other groups are doing and show up for their events. Uh, find out what groups of color are doing, find out what labor groups are doing and build those relationships showing the solidarity by, by showing up their events and, um, and supporting with your cash if you can. Excellent. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Well, um, I just like to say um, we all, none of us can do everything. It's very easy to get overwhelmed. It's very easy to get burnt out. It's very easy to try to do too much. And that doesn't help any of us. And none of us have the same skill sets or abilities or stamina or energy. So do what feels good and do only what feels, I would say, joyful and nourishing to you. Don't give yourself a hard time because you're not doing as much as Tim Corden. Um, 
you're pro- you, you may be happier and that happiness um, and that self-care that you may be doing is going to help attract people to you. And you might do a much better job than I've done burning myself out. So I would say it's really important to bring love and bring care and um, joy to this movement. You know, like, let's have some fun. Um, we may not be able to stop the, the myriad of crises before it's too late. We may be heading for extremely bleak times, but let's do it together and let's do it with love and let's do it with uh, enjoying every possible day that we can. Yeah, that's excellent for sure. Uh, I agree with that. Um, All right. So you can find the project on the web at buildingunitywisconsin.org or you can call Building Unity uh, 608 630-3633. Tim, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate our time. Uh, I look forward to, you know, working with you again in the future, whether it's being another guest on the podcast or trying to come out to some of the events. Um, I I can't thank you enough. This is, uh, you know, it's been great. Hey, Craig, uh, I can't thank you enough. This format is what the movement needs right now and i will be promoting it you can be sure i look forward to hearing all of your podcasts or as many as i can squeeze in um and i also will help uh find other uh activists within the movement um that, that i'm sure would love to talk with you you're a great host i appreciate that and that'd be great uh you know any any help i can get be awesome Thanks for listening. That does it for the show. The plan right now is to have episodes release monthly on the third Wednesday. Thanks to my guests. Special thanks to Nick Josephs for the use of the theme song. You can find Nick on Spotify and on the web at nickjosephs.com. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at dystopian underscore grift. If you'd like to support the show, you can subscribe on patreon.com slash voices from the left or donate on buymeacoffee.com slash voices from the left. All the links will be in the show notes. Thank you so much and solidarity.